This screencast covers the material, Module 4, Lesson 32, where we interpret and evaluate numerical expressions. And we're going to lump in all the stuff that we've learned in this Module 4, including fraction division. Okay, the first part here, it says, circle the expression equivalent to the sum of 3 and 2 divided by 1 third. Well, what I like to do here is just take the words and interpret them and then compare it with my choices here. In some cases, uh, there may be more than one correct answer. So we have the sum of, and that has to go first, the sum of these two numbers, 3 and 2. Then we divide it by 1 third. Well, since we're adding here, we need to put parentheses around this to make sure that that's done first. And then we're going to divide it by one third. Let's look at our choices here. Well, I can see right away that my third choice, this one, is identical to what I wrote. Now let's look at the others here. This one is the sum of three and two divided by what? Three, not one third. So that one's wrong. This one, I would have to, because of the parentheses, well, even if I didn't have the parentheses, order of operations would tell me that I divide before I add. So even without the parentheses, this would be 2 divided by 1 third. And that's not, what's, uh, that's not what's stated in our original expression, which looks like that. This one switches the order. And we now divide 1 third by the sum of 5 and, or the 3 and 2, which is 5. We can't switch the order of the uh, dividend and the divisor here, as is done here, so this one is wrong as well. And if I evaluated that, I would get 3 plus 2 divided by 1 third equals 5 divided by 1 third equals 15, right? And this would be 1 third divided by 5, and that would be... Uh, 5 fifteenths divided by 5, which equals 1 fifteenth, and as you can see, the answers are quite different. Let's look at the number 2. It says circle the expressions, so there's possibly more than one answer. We have 28, okay, that's going to happen first, divided by the difference between, the difference between 4 fifths and 7 tenths. So I'm, I'm just going to write that out. So I have 28 divided by the difference of four-fifths and seven-tenths. Difference tells us that we are subtracting. I'm going to look at my choices here. I can see that this one is correct. It's identical to what I wrote. And then I have this very strange looking one here. I have 28 uh, over a fraction within a fraction. Well, if it's a fraction within a fraction, let's interpret this another way. We can change this to a division problem, can I? And my numerator is my dividend, so I have 28 divided by 4 fifths minus 7 tenths. And, those. and even though that looks kind of odd to us, um, that's what that means. And that's identical to this one, right, uh, to the one that we wrote, or the one that's to the left of it. So that is correct as well. This one uh, changes the order of the dividend and, and the divisor. And that cannot, cannot be correct. And this one switches the order. So this is 7 tenths minus five, 4 fifths, which will give us a negative number. Uh, again, we can't switch the order. Uh, between the minuend and the subtrahend. Uh, if we do, we get a different answer. So there's our two choices. On your homework, you'll have something similar to this. Again, I recommend reading the words, writing out the expression, then looking at things. If you see something strange like this in your homework, just change this to a division problem because our numerator, it will always be our dividend. Our denominator will always be our divisor. Fill in the chart by writing an equivalent numeric, numerical expression. Half as much as the difference between 2 and 1 fourth and 3 eighths. Well, I like to just, the difference between these two. So, again, 
the difference between those is 2 and 1 fourth minus 3 eighths and then we'll half of that and I could do that a number of ways I could use the commutative property change the order I could uh, take that and divide it by 2 if I wanted I could also uh, put the expression 2 and 1 fourth minus 7 eighths over uh, 2 because that's the same as dividing by 2. I'd like to keep it to the multiplying though because that way we don't have to worry about the order. Let's look at B. The difference between 2 and 1 fourth and 3 eighths divided by 4. Well we have the same numbers here don't we? We have the same operation. I just want to point that out. So I have 2 and 1 fourth minus 3 eighths divided by 4. Well, that's the same as 2 and 1 fourth minus 3 eighths times 1 fourth, isn't it? So that gets to our next problem here. Compare these two expressions, 3a and 3b. Without evaluating, identify the expression that is greater. Explain how you know. Well, we'll take your original. Uh, expression here, we can convert it to this, and then we can compare 2 and 1 fourth minus 3 eighths times 1 half, put a little bubble in there for our inequality symbols, 2 and 1 fourth minus 3 eighths times 1 fourth. Well, I know that if I take a difference or I take a number and divide it or d uh, multiply it by half or divide it by 2, I'm going to have a greater number than I would if I divided it by 4 or multiplied it by 1 fourth. So we can easily see without evaluating that 2 and 1 fourth minus 3 eighths times 2, the sum of that, or the difference of those, is greater than the difference between 2 and 1 fourth minus 3 eighths times 1 fourth. Okay, we're just going to now go into words here. And I, I just like to remember that this requires me to do certain things. So I might say three fourths, fourths. What's my operation? It's adding three fourths. The sum shows addition of one and seventy five hundredths and three-fifths. Looking at the next one, seven-ninths, I can just say it right, seven-ninths minus the product of one-eighth and two-tenths, or one-eighth of two-tenths. There's a number of ways to do that. So the difference between Seven ninths, and I could say one eighth of two tenths, or I could say the product of one eighth and two tenths. A number of ways we can do that, but that, that's a pretty uh, safe way to go about it. Okay, we just need to evaluate the expressions here. We need to pay attention to order of operations and, of course, parentheses. Those expressions in parentheses are done first. I like to do them step by step, and it's a good habit. So now I have 5 thirds times 2 times 1 fourth. So that's equal to 2 fourths. And now I can just simply do 5 times 2 over three times four, and I get ten twelfths. And I can simplify that to five sixths. Moving along, one third divided by the difference, excuse me, uh, the quotient of one divided by one fourth. So again, we'll go step by step, one third, Rewrite that, divided by 
How many fourths are in one third? Well, that's the same as one times four. And then I have one third divided by four. We're going to change that to something we can easily divide it, divide by four. So that one third becomes four twelfths divided by four equals one twelfth. The next two are in words, so first we're going to change them to a numerical expression and then go through the steps. So half as much as, that's the same as one half of, okay, three fourths times two tenths. Uh, probably be, e I could either change my decimal to a fraction or my fraction to a decimal. And I could solve these as decimals, I could solve them as fractions. I'm going to go with fractions. One half times three fourths times two tenths. I could simplify that two tenths. I could do it now or later. I, I'm going to do it now. Two, one half times three fourths times one fifth equals one half times three twentieths equals three fortieths. Last one, three times as much as the quotient of two and four tenths and six tenths. So three times the quotient of two and four tenths and six tenths. I could also write it this way, three times two and four tenths over six tenths. Either way is correct. I'm going to go with the latter. So I'm going to work with the expression to the right. So I know that I can move these decimals over one place each. So that equals 3 times 24 divided by 6 equals 3 times 4 equals 12. Okay, in this ex uh, problem, we're going to have to uh, choose an expression below that matches the story problem. Write it in the blank. Let's read the first one. Farmer Green picked 20 carrots. He cooked two-thirds of them, then gave five to his rabbits. Write the expression that tells how many carrots he had left. All right, let's make a tape diagram. We know that the hole is 20. And we are going to partition that into three equal parts. This is what was cooked, and this is what is left. We're going to just draw an arrow. We're going to take what's left, and we're going to give five to the bunnies, and what do we have after that? Okay, we don't know. Uh, interesting here, so what do we have? We want to see what's left after he cooked them, and that would be one-third one-third of 20, and then we subtract 5. So we have one-third times 20 minus 5. Let's look at our choices. Well, among the four choices, guess what? None of them are correct. Because this one has two-thirds times 20, which is the closest expression, but that's the amount cooked, and we want the amount that is left. So, there is no correct answer from this bank, but we can put one in, and we have one-third times 20 minus 5. I don't need parentheses for this because I'm going to multiply before I subtract. Farmer Green picked 20 carrots. He cooked five of them and gave two-thirds to his rabbits. I guess that would have to be two-thirds of what was left to his rabbits, I will presume. Uh, these uh, problems have gone through another set of editing, and I guess we've missed a few uh, issues here. So two-thirds of what was left. Write the expression that tells how many carrots the rabbits will get. So what do we have? We have a hole of 20. We gave, uh, we cooked five. We now have what's left, and we'll make that two-thirds. So we have 20 
and we're going to subtract 5 and then we're going to take that and divide it by 2 thirds. So we have 20 minus 5 times 2 thirds. And if we look up here, we see that this is equivalent because of the commutative pro uh, property. I can rewrite that 2 thirds times 20 minus 5. So 2 thirds times 20 minus 5. This final problem is from the homework. I'll uh, draw some tape diagrams. This is uh, kind of complicated, especially part B. It says, right, uh, it says Lee is uh, sending out 32 birthday party invitations. He gives, she gives five invitations to her mom to give to family members. Lee mails a third of the rest, then she takes a break to walk her dog. Write a numerical expression to describe how many invitations Lee has already mailed. Let's do a tape diagram. Our whole is 32. And she gives five to mom. We'll take that. That's what's left. And we have uh, to divide into three parts because we have a third. So what do we have here? Well, we have this amount from here to here are already mailed. Put a little line there. And this part is not yet mailed. So what are we looking for? How many have we already mailed? Well, what do we have? We have 32. We have to subtract 5, and then we have to take whatever our difference is and divide that by 3, right? And uh, we're going to have to tack that back on. So this represents what was mailed. Look at the tape diagram, work your way through the uh, operations here. Now, this tape diagram is also going to help us with the second problem. And we can see that this represents what is not mailed. And we're going to have to look really carefully through these expressions to figure this one out. Now, these are fairly complex uh, expressions here, and I suggest that you consider them very, very carefully before you make your choice. You might want to actually solve this problem, find the answer to it. Uh, so, again, to find the answer to that, we're going to have to take 32, right, minus 5. We want to see what's left of 32 minus 5. We'll get a number there. We're going to have to divide that by th uh, into three equal parts, and, and we could go for two-thirds of that, right? So, again, 32 minus 5. What do we get? We want two-thirds of it. Now, I, that doesn't mean you're going to see the exact expression there. But you could then, in turn, go and solve these if you're, cons if you're confused, and one of them will give you the correct answer. If you can analyze it out, that's fine, but it's it's fairly complicated. Don't jump on the first thing that you think is correct. Work it through. Think it out.